Okay, and now on to our final question for this month's The Situation Q&A. Hi, John and Ermi. Thank you for an informative show. Thank you. My wife and I have been thinking about what to do with my wife's condo, which we retained as an investment property when we got married and bought our current home together five years ago. For the fast, past five years up to now, we have been renting out the one bedroom, one bathroom condo in downtown Toronto. Right now we are renting it out for $2,400 a month. We were thinking that eventually we may want to move into the condo ourselves once we're ready to downsize in the future, perhaps 10 to 15 years from now. However, we are now very concerned about the federal liber liberal government's recent increase to the capital gains tax on those who make a profit of more than $250,000 when they sell an investment property after June 25th, 2024. That's when the tax will uh, increase will come into effect. We are now wondering if we should try to sell our condo instead before this change kicks in. We are worried that we will end up with a large tax bill to pay on the condo if we hold on to it for many years as an investment property prior to making it our primary residence. What would you advise? Thanks, Barbara. So I've been getting a lot of questions uh, about this, obviously, since the federal government announced the increase to capital gains. Um, there are tons of news last week about, you know, panic selling in cottages. Uh, and I've heard a lot of stories about sellers considering selling. Now, uh, there, I think there's a bit to unpack here. I mean, number one, if you're if in this situation where you bought the property because you're looking at potentially moving into it in 10 or 15 years and it's a good fit for what you need, um, at the end of the day, I mean, you bought it to live in it. I mean, will you pay capital gains on it? I mean, potentially, obviously you will. But after, like, again, the, the portion that is an investment property is taxable. But if you've ended up paying a lot of capital gains, that means you've made a lot of money as well. Like, that is the flip side to it. So, I mean, whether you take your money and invest it in stocks, you're still paying capital gains. Like, it's there's no, you know what I mean? Like, it's not the end of the world, um, especially if you are going to want a property like that in the future anyways. And listen, I mean, how much is the capital gain increase going to be? Like, it obviously depends on how much your gain is. But I think I've seen some people like overly panic. It's like, so there's no difference if your gain is up to $250,000, right? The same gains apply. And just for like, for basically for everyone who doesn't know what the changes are, basically, you know, if I made $250,000 capital gain, the the gain, the, the I'm only taxed on 50% of that gain, right? That kind of has been, that were the rules before the recent budget. You're basically only taxed on half of the gain. Um, and the, basically the federal government said, well, let's change the rules now and say, well, if you're an individual, on any portion that's over 250, we're going to tax it at two thirds, right? And if you're a corporation, all of it's taxed at two thirds, right? So corporations are getting hit a little bit harder. So if it's personal, you know, if you've made uh, 250,000, you're not impacted at all. It's the same rules. And then, so anything over 250, yeah, incrementally, you're going to have a slight difference. But let's just say you made, you know, half a million on it. I mean, the tax hit, the difference is probably going to be something like 20 grand or something like that. Like, and yeah, that's, I mean, 20 grand, 20 grand, but rushing to sell. And this is what I think a lot of people don't get that are thinking like this. It's very hard to sell an investment property that is tenanted. I did a whole series of videos. Maybe we'll add them in the show notes. It's difficult to sell a tenanted property. Uh, tenants don't want to move. Buyers are reluctant to assume tenants. The rents are usually below market. A lot of times they don't show well. So this idea that you're going to sell a property quickly before the deadline is very optimal. Not just sell it, you'd have to close on it, which means like the buyer's got to take possession of it in like under two months. Um, it's very unlikely. Like it's very unlikely that, that it's, that's going to happen. So I mean, my feeling is I, I think people are worried about it a little bit too much. Obviously, some people who have 
you know, if you made like a million bucks in gains, you're probably going to get hit with like a six figure difference, right? Uh, which obviously is a ton of money. Uh, but again, it's, it's you know, on, on that type of property, it's obviously going to be a much more expensive property. And again, those are, it's hard to sell, especially if it's tenanted. So I don't, and again, so I don't want to say yes or no on either. I think it depends on the situation. If the property just vacated and you want to unload it and, you know, you were planning on maybe selling it anyways and you want to avoid the increase. Yeah, sure. But in a situation like this where, they're buying something that was going to be long-term, a 10-year purchase or 15-year purchase. I mean, if you're paying more in capital gains, it means you've made money. You know what I mean? Um, so what's the difference if you've made it on your property or you made it in the stock market? I mean, it's not really not that different. So I wouldn't sell personally if I was in this situation. So in spite of all the newspaper articles, uh, which screen capital gains increase at the top, there's different scenarios. The person who inherited a cottage, mm -hmm. you know, which their parents bought for 75,000, which then is now worth many, many decades later, a million dollars. So they've now realized that, you know, almost a million dollar gain that you're talking about is very different from someone who bought a condo five years ago. Yeah, exactly. And and what gains they've realized on yeah. that appreciation. So that's one thing to keep in perspective. The second thing is that this couple was hoping to move into the property as a retirement plan, presumably because they like the location. They mentioned mm -hmm. it's downtown Toronto, and that's many people's plan. But once they can, they mm -hmm. like to go back to a central location. And the question there then is, if they unload this property now and want to downsize and get that kind of property 10, 15 years from now. Well, you have to think of how much the prices for that kind of property will have appreciated. Sure, they have to, exactly. They got to rebuy it in 10 or 15 years. So what they're, what, I mean, that's exactly what this comes down to. It's almost like, am I better off investing my money in, in some other investment that will outperform the real estate market? That's kind of what you're the question is. It's not about, am I going to pay cap more capital gains 10 years from now? Right. Um, because you have to pay capital gains on whatever you're investing in anyways. So the question is more, you're right. If, if the condo is going to go up X percent in 10 or 15 years, well, am I better off investing in something else and taking my cash and putting it there? Um, so that's, I mean, I don't know. I, I personally wouldn't bother. <laughs> it's just hold what you like. And you know what I mean? Not worry about what your capital gains are going to be, you know, and not even 10 or 15 years from now, because they might move into it or 10 or 15 years. So it's going to be like 25 years from now when they want to sell it. Right. Yes. And just to be clear, John, um, because I have seen some confusion around this. Mm -hmm. uh, some people think, well, if they're moving into this unit in 10 or 15 years, it becomes their primary residence. So mm -hmm. they don't owe any capital gains on it. They're selling their old primary residence. They don't get taxed on those proceeds. They're moving into this condo as a primary residence. They don't have to get taxed on anything. But the the reality is uh, that a change of status occurs, right? With that mm -hmm. condo they're moving into and yeah. the portion of the time that they rented it out and made a gain exactly. would be taxed, right? Exactly. So yeah. that tax uh, would kick in when they move into it. After they move into it and make it their primary residence, any future appreciation though, I would presume, is no longer subject to that capital gains. Exactly. Yeah. So typically what you what people would do is in a situation like that, once they plan to move into it, so it was an investment property, but now they're moving in, they would get an appraisal like in the in the month that they're moving in to determine the market value at that time. So that the gain from when they originally bought it to the date that they're moving in is tech, technically taxable as a capital gain. But anything from that moment going forward is a principal residence. And that's obviously they would do that when they sell, but at least they have some kind of documentation of, of what the value was when they moved into it. So maybe that's a further consideration for anyone who is planning to move into that cottage or that condo as a permanent residence at some point, maybe look at your timeline and mm -hmm. you know don't push it out as long as maybe you were thinking. Mm -hmm. So it seems like a real numbers game again. I'm sure you would advise John sitting down with your favorite numbers person Barbara, <laughs> and crunching 100%. them all and, and figuring it out. But you are hearing from a lot of worried people that you think maybe are worrying a little bit too much if they're in this particular situation, which is a condo they've only bought a few years ago. 
Yeah, exactly. And I, and I think, yeah, not, you know, uh, not every, even if they bought it house or whatever, even 10 years ago, like the odds, like, even if you've made, like I said, 400 grand on it or 500, like your, your uh, increase in your gain is not that insane. You know what I mean? Like, I think everyone's going to be fine, quite frankly. Wow. You went on record. <laughs> I'm going to raise my keep calm and carry on mug one more time. I think I might get trolled a little bit. I mean, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to pay more tax on anything. Don't get me wrong. I'm not excited about the increase, but um, we're not going no, to. No, you're on record as saying everything's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Keep <laughs> calm and carry on. All right. Well, uh, thanks, John. I hope our viewers found that useful. And uh, now all that's left for me to do is to thank everyone for watching, for listening, and for continuing to send in such great questions. Please keep them coming. And we'll be back with our next consumer segment a month from now. Thanks, John. Thanks thank to you. the audience. Thanks for the questions.